All right, y'all, first and foremost, give all praise and honor and glory to the Most High God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and the son of Hamashiach, who some call Yahweh Shai, Yeshua, Yehoshua, uh, Yasha Yah. Well, we mostly know as Jesus Christ. All right, we're going over a short lesson here with the Kenites, Kenizzites, the scribes of Israel. What brought me to this? Well, I've did a lesson on the Kenizzites before. You can scrub, you know, if you, it's kind of probably going to go through some of the same stuff. Um, but there is a lesson on it if, you, if you're just looking for a little more. Um, I don't think it's much left on the bone after this, though, to be honest. Um, uh, where was I going? Oh, the, the scribes of Israel. I've seen them as scribes. I'm like, man, let me go. But why are they the scribes in Israel? And that was the question I had. And um, in, in researching that, I came to some other information. I said, let me revisit and just share this information. Not here to tell you how to think or what to think, just to present you with the information. All right, that's what we're doing. Genesis uh, 15, 18 to 21. It says, In the same day the Lord made a covenant with Abram, saying unto thy seed have I given this land from the river of Egypt unto the great river and the river, Euphra the, the river Euphrates. Uh, the Kenites and the Kenizzites and the Catmonites, the Catmonites and the Hez the Hittites and the Perizzites and the Rapha Raphaims and the Amorites and the Canaanites, I mean in the Canaanites and the Girgashites and the Jebusites. All right, how many is that? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten nations, right? Deuteronomy 7, 1 through 3, it says, When the Lord thy God shall bring thee in the land, whither thou goest to possess it, and hast cast out many nations before thee, the Hittites, the Girgashites, the Amorites, the Canaanites, the Perizzites, the Hivites, the Hivites, the Hivites, we don't even see that up there, and the Jebusites, um, and the Hivites may be the Girgashites. I don't see the Girgashites. Oh, no, nope, we do see the Gergeshites. Hmm. Who are the Hivites? But anyway, and the Jebusites, seven nations greater and mightier than thou. And when the Lord thy God shall deliver them before thee, thou shalt smite them and utterly destroy them. Thou shalt not make no covenant with them, nor show mercy with them, neither shalt thou make marriages with them. Thy daughter thou shalt not give unto his son, nor his daughter shalt thou take unto thy son. And one of the questions I was gleaning from here is why is there 10 nations initially in Genesis 15? Um, and here we see it saying it's seven nations. All right seven nations at the end of verse one you see verse two here at the end of verse one seven nations greater and mightier than than thou but we see here uh ten nations why ain't the Canaanites in the in the kids in the Kenizzites in the Camanites mentioned and then we see here Raphaim I think that's there and it's not here um and we see Hivites here, but not there. That's a whole nother. That's a whole nother thing we'll have to look into. All right. If somebody had an answer, look into that. Look into the blue letter. Uh, and get some information. See if they, they these are the same nations or are these two different nations. Um, but talking about the Kenites in the in the in the in the in the Kenizzites, uh, in particular. Um, we see them not mentioned here. All right. And you could be like, why ain't it mentioned there? We're going to get into why it's not mentioned there far as getting them, you know, I'm, a, you know, a, abolish them out of the land. I'm going to kill them. Don't leave none alive. Don't take them daughters for sons and so forth. All right. Um, and it named these, uh, in that land. Even though we know from Genesis 15 that the Kenites, the Kenizzites, the Camanites, and also these Raphaim, whoever they are, uh, we know they are there in the land also. Uh, Jethro, uh, Rag uh, Ragael, uh, priest of Medium, uh, he's also called Ragael. We'll see that in uh, in a minute. 
a priest of Midian, a friend of God. Exodus 3 1. It says, Now Moses kept the flock of Jethro, his father in law, the priest of Midian. And he had and he led the flock to the backside of the desert and came to the mountain of God, even to Horeb. Okay. Jethro, Moses' father in law, is a Kenite is a Kenite is and also he is a priest of Midian Exodus 18 verse 1 we're gonna read 1 through 12 it says when Jethro the priest of Midian Moses father-in-law heard all heard of all that the uh, the God uh all that God had done for Moses and for Israel his people and the Lord had brought Israel out of and that the Lord had brought Israel out of Egypt. Then Jethro, Moses' father-in-law, took Zipporah, Moses' wife, after he had sent her back, and her two sons, of which the name of them was Gershom, for he said, I have been an alien in a strange land. Uh-uh. And the name of the other was Eleazar, for the God of my father. Mm-mm. Uh, said he was mine help and delivered me from the sword of Pharaoh and Jethro Moses father-in-law came with his sons and his father and his wife all right and his wife unto Moses into the wilderness and we, we, we where he encampeth at the mount of God and he said unto Moses, I, thy father-in-law Jethro, am come unto thee and thy wife and, and her two sons with her. And Moses went out to meet his father-in-law and did obedience and kissed them. And they asked each other of their welfare. And they came into the tent. And Moses told his father-in-law all that the Lord had done unto Pharaoh and the Egyptians for Israel's sake. And all the tr all that in all the travail that had come upon them by the way and how the Lord delivered them and Jethro Jethro rejoiced for all the goodness which the Lord had done to Israel whom he had delivered out of the hand of the Egyptians Jethro rejoiced and Jethro said verse 10 Jethro said blessed be the Lord who have delivered you out of the hand of the Egyptians and out of the hand of Pharaoh, who have delivered the people from under the hand of the Egyptians. Now I know, this Jethro, priest of Median. Now I know that the Lord is greater than all gods. For in, for in the thing wherein they dwelt proudly, he was above them. And this too is, you know, giving you the why. All right. Why was Israel in Egypt for 400 years? Why was Pharaoh's heart hardened? This was the this is what the most high wanted to do. This is the, the effect he wanted to have on not just Israel, but all the surrounding nations. But everyone to know that this is he is the one true God. That God of Israel is the one true God above all other gods. All right. And this is the impression that Jethro <clears throat> has received uh by by this 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 gospel this good news that moses is telling them spreading with him about how them being delivered um out of the hands of egypt um you know through the most high god um and jethro verse 12 and moses father-in-law took a burnt offering and jethro moses father-in-law the priest of median took a burnt offering and sacrifices for God. And Aaron came and all the elders of Israel to eat bread with Moses father-in-law before God. And they broke bread. All right. They can't Aaron, the, you know, who's going to lead the Levitical priest. He comes when Jethro gives up this sacrifice, this burnt offering to, to Yahweh. Yahweh, Yehuda. Yohevai, Hashem, whatever you going by. Um, 
Aaron them came and broke bread with him. Aaron came, Moses in, 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 to Moses' father-in-law, and um, they sat before God and ate bread. All right, so Jethro, why is Jethro, you know, how does he have the knowledge of, you know, sacrificing uh, to this deity, to the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob? How does he have this knowledge? And, you know, I read somewhere about um, Jethro too, you know, in some of the, the pseudopigrapha books or the apocryphal books um, that Jethro, in some of those writings, I don't know which book, I forget which book, it was, but Jethro, in some of these books, they have Jethro as a priest of many different deities. And even to the extent of him um, even being a priest or a counselor to to the, the Pharaoh. Um, and that he had reached a high level of priesthood. Um, just learning all these different ways. He just, just they, you know, they just building them up to show that he was very knowledgeable of, you know, the different deities of these high holy places, uh, of these vineyards, of these groves, all these places where people sacrifice and all the deities that they sacrifice to. Uh, he was very knowledgeable of these things. And he was very knowledgeable of the God of Israel, of Yahweh. Of or, or being a Yahweh, we'll see that too later. Uh, Numbers chapter 10, verse 29 it says, Moses said unto uh, Hobab, a uh, Hoab, Hobab, the son of Rahuel the Midianite, Rahuel the Midianite, Raguel the Midianite, that is Jethro. All right, that's another name for Jethro. Don't take my word for it, look it up. All right, Moses' father-in-law. That should give you a hint. We are journeying unto a place of which the Lord said, I will give it you. Come thou with us. Okay, so Moses said to Hoab the son. This is, this is Jethro's son. So Hobab is Moses' brother-in-law. So Moses says to his brother-in-law, all right, journeying unto the place which the Lord said, I will give it you. Come thou with us, and we will do thee good, for the Lord hath spoken good concerning Israel. And he said unto him, I will not go. All right, the brother-in-law said, nah, we straight. But I will depart to my own land and to my kindred. And he said, leave us not, I pray thee. For as much as thou knowest how we are to encamp in the wilderness, you're very knowledgeable of how to operate in this wilderness. How to, you watch what he says here. And thou mayest be to us instead of eyes. You can be our eyes, you can be our guide. All right. They were a little more advanced, the Kenites, than Israel. And it shall be if thou go with us, yea, it shall be that what goodness the Lord shall do unto us, the same will we do unto thee. If you come, brother, you know, whatever the Lord, whatever the Lord, you know, render unto us, and then that, you know, whatever, we, we gonna share with you. This is Moses' brother-in-law, a Kenite. And if you could notice, we're kind of, we're going in chronological order with this thing. You know, we were starting Genesis, little Exodus, Numbers, we Judges, all right, uh-oh. Judges chapter 1, a friend in the wilderness. Uh, Judges chapter 1, 16 through 20, and the children of the Kenite, the children of the Kenite, Moses' father-in-law, went up out of the city of palm trees with the children of Judah into the wilderness of Judah, which lieth south of Arad. And they went and they dwelt among the people. 
And Judah went with Simeon, his brother, and they slew the Canaanites, the Canaanites. Remember, we, we went to back to the Genesis 15. They're going, they're slaying the Canaanites to take over the land. He gave you all of these people that lived there. But then you see in Deuteronomy chapter seven, it was seven nations that they were supposed to destroy. But the Kenites wasn't one of those nations. Now we see the Kenites dwelling among the people. Um, they slew the Canaanites that inhabited Zephthah and utterly destroyed it. And the name of the city was called Hermah. Also, Judah took Geza, the coast thereof, and Ascalon, the coast thereof, and Ekron, the coast thereof. A lot of y'all went crazy on the, you know, after that Gaza incident, that recent Gaza incident with the with the prophesied and the, uh, uh, this is that and this is this and this is that, you know. But these things did happen, um, <clears throat> you know, in 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 pre-exilic. You know, this is us getting into the land. Um, and the Lord was with Judah, and he drove and he drave out the inhabitants of the mountain, but could not drive out the inhabitants of the valley, because they had chariots of iron, and they gave Hebron unto Caleb. All right, and you'll see in the text a lot of times it says Caleb, the son of Jethuna or Jeff Jephune, uh a Kenizzite. All right, they gave uh Hebron to Caleb as Moses said, and he expelled thence the three sons of Anak. Okay, Caleb went in there and expelled them and got him up out of there. But it was a land given unto Caleb within Judah. All right, Judah got their land. The Kenites dwelt among them in the land. Then Caleb got him a land. Caleb got him a portion of within Judah. Uh, Hebron, you know, which was agreed upon with Moses. Uh, Judges 4.11. It says, now Heber, the Kenite, uh, which was of the children of Hobab, the father-in-law of Moses. Now, if you following along, let's not, let's not get a, you know. Oh, let me go back a couple slides. Um, and Moses said, Numbers 10, verse 29, and Moses said unto Hoab, the son of Raguel the Midnight, the son of Jethro. Okay. So so Moses and Hoab. The Hoab is Moses, Hobab, Hobab, or whatever. Is um Moses' brother in law. All right, we get here to Judges 4, and this is dealing with the story of Deborah. Okay, the story of Deborah and how it concludes, okay, with this dude named Heber, his wife, Yael. Okay, his wife, Yael, stabs the Moabite, I think the Moabite king in the head with a tent peg. All right, if y'all familiar with that story, if you're not, you know, freshen up. Freshen up on the story uh, in Judges. It's around this, you know, Judges 3, 4, 5, Judges 2, 3, 4, 5, something like that. Um, now Heber the Kenite, which was of the children of Hobab, the father-in-law of Moses. Okay, and again, this this is not the father-in-law of Moses. This is the brother-in-law of Moses. You will see some translations have you know fixed this, uh, but this is why you know you want to do comparative texts. Hobab is not the father-in-law of Moses. Jethro also known as Raguel, is the father-in-law of Moses. This is the brother-in-law. Let me see if they fix that in the KJ, in the New King James. Let me see if they might have fixed it in the New King James. One second, y'all. Nope. Nope, they didn't. 
but they did. All right. All right. So, it's, you know, that should be better translated brother in law of, of, of Moses. And had severed himself from the Kenites and pitched his tent unto the plain, unto the plain of Zianam, which is by Kadesh. Okay, Heber the Kenite. Okay, he severed himself uh, from the rest of the folks. You know, went out here in this plain and this didn't this 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 little valley land. And um, once uh, that king ended up running by, he thought he could you know find him a. Uh, he thought he had a safe haven. You know, he he trusted them a little bit. If you read the story, but um, Yael. His Eber's uh, Heber's wife ends up killing that king uh, for Israel. All right. Uh, a friend in the wilderness. Well, this was a little out of order. I should have read this before we read the Judges 4. Well, Judges 1. Uh, Judges 1, 16 through 20. All right. And the children of the Kenite, of the Kenite Moses father. Wait, wait, did we read that? I think we did read that. I'm sorry, y'all. Yeah, we did read that. We were in order. Saul spares Kenites. All right, just a few more slides, y'all. I know. I know. Just a few more, though. All right. Um, 1 Samuel 15, 1 through 6, it says, Samuel also said unto Saul, The Lord sent me to anoint thee to be king over his people, over Israel. Now, therefore, hearken thou unto the voice of the words of the Lord. Thus saith the Lord of hosts, I remember that which Amalek did to Israel how he laid wait for him in the way when he came up from Egypt now go and smite Amalek and utterly destroy all that they have and spare them not but slay both man and woman infant and suckling ox and sheep camel and ass and Saul gathered the people together and numbered them and tell tell I am uh, 200,000 footmen and 10,000 men of Judah. And Saul came back, came, and Saul came to a city of Amalek and laid wait in the valley. And Saul said unto the Kenites, Go, depart, get ye down from the Amalekites, lest I destroy you with them. For you show kindness to all the children of Israel. When they came up out of Egypt, so the Kenites departed from the Amalekites. So Saul, you know, gave warning, like, listen, man, I'm about to kill these folks. You know, y'all need to come on up out of there. Come on. You don't know about it there for out for out. You know, we finna destroy, we finna mutilate, man. We finna, we finna wipe out everything. Y'all need to come on up out of there. He gives them that grace. Why? Because they they were a friend in the wilderness. Okay, they were a friend, you remember? They were their eyes, they were their guides. You know, they may not even know too much about that tent life like that. Um, I know David's people must really hate him. I know David's people must really hate him. Now, this is a time where um uh, David's kind of coming back. David's running from Saul, and then when he's fighting Saul, and somebody else come in and take the folks, uh, take advantage and, and take all his wives and stuff away. And <clears throat> um, no, no, this may not have been Saul. This may have been um Yeah, this could be Saul. I know he's in a battle. Yeah, 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 yeah. This Saul. It's in the verse one. So he's fighting them and then he's then he's trying to take the kingdom back. And then but also when he's fighting them, somebody come in and 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 and, and fight a, you know, while he got his back turned fighting somebody else, somebody comes in, snatches uh, all the people up, snatches all the women, all the wives up. And he, you know, before he went out and fought the other people coming back from Zal fighting them, he was like, Man, you know, y'all come with us. And a lot of jokers didn't come. You know what I'm saying? A lot of jokes was like, nah, we straight. We ain't finna fight nobody. We tired. 
Uh, but you need you need to go in, read that story, get familiar with it. I right, verse uh first Samuel twenty seven. Oh, we'll go over it. I got a story with dealing with zigzag and I forget what I named it. Um he covered that when he had put him in that cave and covered that rock where the kings was at. Anyway, uh first Samuel uh twenty seven, one through twelve, and David said in his heart, I shall now perish one day. I shall now perish one day by the hand of Saul. There is nothing better for me than that I should speedily escape into the land of the Philistines. And Saul, Saul, uh, and Saul shall despair of me to seek me anymore. Shall despair of me to seek me anymore in any coast of Israel. So shall I escape out of his hand. And David arose and he passed over the 600, he passed over with 600 men that were with him in, in Achish, uh, the son of Maach, a king of Gath. And David dwelt with uh, Achish at Gath. He and his men, every man with his household, even David with his two wives. Uh, Ahinaam, Ahinaam, a high no arm, a high no arm, a high no arm. Uh, the Jezreelites, the Jezreelites, and Abigail, the Carmelites, the Carmelites, the Jezreelites, and Abigail, the Carmelites, Carmelites, Nabal's wife. And it was told Saul that David was fled to Gath, and he sought no more again for him. And David said unto Achish, if I have now found grace in thine eyes, let them give me a place in some town in the country that I might dwell there. For why should thy servant dwell in the royal city with thee? All right. And David here is kind of playing, you know, he's being facetious. He kind of, <clears throat> you know, he, 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 he got a plan. Let me just say that he got a plan. And he already done, done, done fool Saul. You know, by by going over here with these Philistines and, um, you know, you know, Saul's like out of sight, out of mind. You know, he going out there with them. We ain't going to worry about it. You know, they probably kill him anyway, you know. But uh, if you familiar with the story, you know, he played, you know, David played like he was crazy and out of his mind or whatever. And and that he will fight with uh, Aish, all right, with this king against Israel. Uh, and this is what he's kind of portraying now, just not, you know, he's just not, um, not really doing, it. he's kind of just, you know, he's, he's, he's tricking them. He's saying he's doing it. He's doing it a little bit, but not like, you know, not like he's putting off. Um, and we'll see here. Um, and David said to Aish, if I have not found grace in thine eyes, let them give me a place in some town in the country that I might dwell there. For why should thy servant dwell in the royal city with thee? Then Aish, uh, Aish gave him Ziklag that day. Wherefore Ziklag pertaineth unto the kings of Judah unto this day. Okay, unto this day. Aklish gave him Ziklag in a... Uh, you know, the writer, whoever's writing this, you know, to that day, uh, Judah still had control over that place. And at the time, David dwelt in the country of the Philistines was a full was a full year and four months. And David and his men went up and invaded the Gergesites and the Jezrites and the Amalekites for those nations were of old inhabitants of the land. As thou goest to sure, even unto the land of Egypt. And David smote the land and left neither man nor woman alive and took away the sheep and the oxen and the asses and the camels and the apparel and returned and came to Achish. And Achish said, whether have ye made a road today? You know, man, we, you know, he been bringing this stuff back to Akish, you know, slaughtering these people, slaughtering a couple of them people that were out there uh, in some of those territories in the Philistines. Um, and, you know, uh, and bringing those spoils, bringing some of those spoils back um, to Akish. And Akish is like, hey, man, he out here on the rampage. Hey, man, where you going today? You know, 
Who you going to slaughter today? And David said against the south of Judah. We're going against the south of Judah. Are we going to go get Judah up out of there now? And against the south of the Jeremelites. And against the south of the Kenites. And David saved neither man, and David saved neither man nor woman alive to bring tidings to Gath, saying, Least they should tell on us, saying, So did David, and so will be his manner all the while he dwelleth in the country of the Philistines. And so he's telling the man, Hey man, you know, I, I've been through that, man. We ran through that. We ain't leave nobody alive because they would have told on me. They would have told on me. Um, and Akish believed David saying he, he have made his people Israel utterly to abhor him. Therefore he shall be my servant. He's like, man, we got him locked in. We got David locked in forever. He can never go back. That foolishness. He just told me he just did. He just went down there. He slayed the Kenites. He slayed the Jaramelites. Jir and he saw, you know, the, you know, those south of Judah. Those south of Judah. Yeah. He's like, they're slaying them for me. They're slaying them folks. Man, listen, his people will never take him back. Never take him back. And the point is, if these are just some, just some heathen, these are just some, you know, some Kenites that nobody cares about you know what's the problem what's the problem with david killing and why does this this king of philistine even recognize that david destroying them folks is a violation it's him killing his own people <clears throat> um first samuel 30 uh 26 through 31 shared spoils all right and what was this at? Was it 27? Yeah, chapter 30, 26 to 31. It says, and when David came to Ziklag, he sent the spoils of the elders. When he, he done, he done got everything back. He done, you know, he, he, he's, he's coming back for the throne. He done came back for the throne. Jokers who ran off, um, with some of the spoils they had there. He done got that back. And now he's coming back with the spoils. To divide among the people. All right, just start at verse one if you need to. And when David came to Ziklag, he he sent of the spoil unto the elders of Judah, even to his friends, saying, "Behold, a present for you of the spoil of the enemies of the Lord." Okay, he came back said, "Listen, this is a present for y'all." And to note, uh, the people that went out the second time to fight, a lot of people that stayed back. Uh, the people that went out the second time, they were like, uh, man, don't get them that stuff. Don't get them nothing. They don't get, they don't deserve, just get them their wives back. Outside of that, they don't get to share in the spoils. They ain't want to come out here. They were like, nah, we ain't going to do that. We're going to share the spoils with everybody. Uh, behold, a present for you are the spoils of the enemies of the Lord. Uh, to them which were in Bethel. And to them which were in uh, South Ramoth, and to them which were in uh, Yatir, and to them which were in Arir, and to them which were in Sip Sifmoth, and to them that were in Estamoa, and to them that were in Ra Ra Rael, and to them which were in the cities of Jaramelites. And to them which were in the cities of the Kenites, and to them which were in Hermoth, and to them which were in Karoshan, and to them which were in Athok, Athok, and to them which were in Hebron, and to all the places where David himself and the men were, uh, were wont to hunt, and his men were wont to hunt. All right. So he brought back and shared the spoils amongst Israel, amongst Judah. And um, just the fact that we see the Kenites here, um, it tells us something. What does it tell us? 
All right, First Chronicles chapter 2, verse 55, it says, And the families of the scribes which dwelt at Jabez. All right, then if you start at verse 3, it tells you, like, this is the, they're chronicling the, the sons of Judah. Uh, verse 55, it gets down to the end. Before this, they even talk about Caleb. The sons of Caleb. And the families of the scribes which dwelt at Jabez, the Tarathites, all right, and we seen that here. Then we see that Tair, um, to them Jatir, and to them of Akior. Uh, we didn't see them, or did we? That's Can I Nah. It was Jatir. We seen it somewhere. I recall it somewhere. We just going over it. Anyway, let's go ahead and get through this, y'all. Um, and the families of the scribes was dwelt at Jabez, the Tyrathites, the Shimaathites, and the Succothites. <laughs> Such a thites. Uh, these are the Kenites that came to Hamath, the father of the house of, uh, that came of Hamath, the father of the house of Rechab. Now we got a lesson called the Rechabites. Who are the Rechabites? All right. Um, that's Jeremiah. It's only one chapter. Jeremiah chapter 35. You can learn about the Rechabites. Um, and what the most High said about the Rechabites. All right, but these are the Kenites that came of Hamath, the father of the house. Now, these are the families of the scribes. And this is my whole question. This was this would send us down this, this little rabbit hole. Is why are Kenites our scribes? Okay. Why are they the scribes? And we may look at that last verse in that 35. Uh and this is just some some Google, you know. We just showed the work, but this is the Google. You could have just did an easy Google on who the Kenites are and what they, uh, you could have put in. That's all I did. I put in, why were the Kenite scribes? Uh, according to critical interpretation of the biblical data, the Kenites were a clan settled on the southern border of Judah, originally more advanced in arts than the Hebrews, and from whom the latter learned much. In the time of David, the Kenites were finally incorporated into the tribe of Judah. Also here, this is AI. And again, you know, brothers, you know, you out here teaching is just a quick bop, bop, bop on their phone. And AI is answering this stuff. Um, it says the Kenites were a nomadic group. Uh, they were allies with the Israelites and were eventually assimilated into the tribe of Judah. Uh, kindness to Israel. The Kenites were kind to the Israelites during their journey through the wilderness, accompanying them as far as Jericho. Uh, Moses' father-in-law, Jethro, Moses' father-in-law was a Kenite priest leader who led the tribe in worship of Yahweh. Yael, we talked about Yoel, the one stabbed the woman, stabbed the joker in the head with the tent peg. Uh, Heber's wife, the Kenite woman, kills uh, Sisera, the general of Israel's enemies, the Rechabites. We just talking about who the Rechabites are. And we seen that Second Chronicles uh, two, uh, First Chronicles two, fifty five, where the scribes were Kenites from the Rechabites. All right, the Rechabites who were uh, fanatical Yahwehs uh, were also of the Kenite stock. Caleb, all right, Joshua and Caleb. Caleb was a Kenizzite, closely related to the Kenites. All right, he was a Kenizzite. You also see Calebites um, in the text, you know, several times. And this is this is this is the confusion that we have too. Like um, when if y'all watch that debate with a uh, rabbi. With with a priest Haka uh, debated this rabbi, 
And the rabbi said, well, he's Jefune, a Kenizzite. Uh, that's his father was a he's the son of his father, the Kenizzite. Uh, you are what your father is. So if his father is a Kenizzite, then he must be a Kenizzite. And it says this, you know, more than a few times. Well, it says it three or four times, you know. Um, Jephune, the son, Caleb, the son of Jephune, the Kenizzite, uh, which should let us know that he's a Kenizzite. What throws us off is when they're counting, they're looking for people or representatives of Judah. Caleb is one of those representatives. All right, Caleb represented Judah, so it looked like he's a Judite. But as we've gone through this lesson, uh, we see that the Kenites were assimilated and incorporated in Judah, not just the Kenites, but the Kenizzites, uh, also. Um, And so that's why it says that. So you have to make that harmonize. And what they did and how it ended is just one brother saying, hey, man, you know, is Jeff Rune, he's a Kenizzite. And then the other brother said, well, he's a, he's a Judite. He's not a Kenizzite. He's a Judite. Well, <laughs> you can't, like, the text say what it say. You have to make that harmonize. And this is, in my opinion, how this harmonizes. It's not just my opinion, but I guess AI opinion also. <laughs> uh, Othniel, Caleb's nephew, was one of the judges who saved Israel. His nephew, he's a Kenizzite also. Assimilation. Over time, the Kenites were absorbed into the tribe of Israel. I mean of Judah, I'm sorry. Over time, the Kenites were absorbed into the tribe of Judah. Uh, the Kenites were a group of interner... In, in, uh, metal smiths who traded in the uh, Araba re uh, region from the 13th century to the 9th century BC. Uh, they were related to the Midianites and the Israelites. All right, man, I pray this thing was edifying. Y'all have any questions or if y'all have any useful information to add to the lesson or any questions about uh, what we just went over? Um, you know, leave them in the comments. We will try to get these videos live. I just got rid of StreamYard. Um, so I got to get on stream on, on stream labs and try to figure out how to, um, how to navigate that. And then we're going to be live. Okay. We're going to do the lessons live again. I right, pray this thing was edifying. Y'all be blessed. Shalom.